Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Now on this video, it's going to be just a quick little video where I show you how you can personalize or customize a design that you get off of Creative Fabrica, Design Bundles, or any other site where you can purchase or download files. Now the first one I'm going to work with is this Spooky Mama file. I thought this was adorable. Pink's one of my favorite colors, so I think that will be really cute. And then the other one I'm going to work with is this football mom. I'm going to personalize this one by adding my friend's son's number right here. And then on this one, instead of saying one spooky mama, I'm going to say one spooky lady. So I'm going to show you how I change this. So currently I have a one month membership to Creative Fabrica and I am finding all kinds of files that I love in it. I've downloaded, I would guess, over 30 files so far. This is one of those sites where you can just buy one item or you can have a membership. I'm going to put links in the video description. I have become an affiliate and so if you use my links, thank you so much. I will receive a small commission for that and I truly appreciate that. Now I've already downloaded these files, so let me go ahead and close those out. To do my work, I'm going to use Inkscape. You could use Inkscape, you could use Adobe Illustrator. Inkscape's a free design software. I've become really comfortable with it. I really like it. And so that's what I'll use. So the first thing I want to do is go to File and then Document Properties. Right now, mine is defaulted to 12 by 12, but I'm going to be printing on a standard size piece of paper. So right here, I'll select US Letter. And that's already changed my template. I can go ahead and X out. So I think I said the first one I'd work on is the Spooky Mama. So I go to File, Import, and I save that file on my desktop, and it's right here. So I click on it and say Open. I leave my import settings alone. I've never changed those. So this is what's defaulted in the program. So I click OK. So the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and change the width and the height. These are a little bit different than what I'm going to use. What you need to do is really just measure your tumbler, see what works for you, and then change the measurements to fit that. So with the tumblers I'm going to use, I want it 8.1 inches tall. This is unlocked, so I can change the height independently than the width. And then I'm going to go with 9.44 inches wide. You know, actually, I'm going to go down to 9.4 instead. Okay, so I have the basic dimensions that I need. I'm ready to work with my image. Now, I want to zoom in on that so I can see it a lot better. I'm going to hold the shift down and click the plus sign. Isn't this a gorgeous image? I love the colors. Now, the first thing I want to do is just get rid of this mama. So I'm going to make it a little larger yet. Now this is a PNG. So these are not all little individual pieces. If I try to just erase this, let me show you what happens. Let's use the eraser tool. I drag the eraser through that. Nothing happens. <laughs> I can't erase just that one piece of this PNG. If I use a different eraser setting, watch what happens. You touch anything on your PNG, the whole thing goes away. So let's click the back button and get that back. So here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm just going to have to cover over this with white. Now, depending on the shape, sometimes you could cover over it with an oval or a circle or a rectangle. But if I use a rectangle and I cut out this, then I'm going to go over and cut out some of this O. So I'm going to have to be a little bit more creative. So I'm going to select this little pencil here. I'll click on that. And then I'll use my cursor and I'll draw all the way around this mama. I'm getting a little wild. I just need to make sure I don't run into something else. And then I get all the way around it. And if I mess up, I just start over. I think I'm good though. Once I come together, that turns red and I can just let go of my cursor. Okay, so let's go ahead and select that. To do that, you go right here to this select tool. 
Now, all I need to do is fill this in with white. To do that, you can go right over here to fill and stroke. Now, if this doesn't show up over here, go up to object and then down to fill and stroke. Okay, so I want the middle of this circle or the fill of this circle to be white. So I'm going to click on fill right here. Right now, there's no fill. There's no paint in it. I want a solid paint. So I'm going to click right here on this solid square. It filled it with black. So to change that, I can come down here, let it know I want to use white. Now we still have the line around it, and that's what's called a stroke. So I'm going to go to stroke. And you see it's a solid color stroke. The solid color is black. I'm just going to say, I don't want a stroke. I want no paint. It looks like it's just totally gone. Let me show you. If I move this, well, I have to select it first. If I move that, it's still there. So I'll cover it back up. Now, since I'm printing this, it's not a cut file. It's going to print exactly how you see it. So now I'm ready to add the word lady. So I'm going to click on the text tool right here. Then I'll go over here and I'll click about where I want to type. All right, let's move down just a little bit. There we go. I can always move it around later. Now, to type there, I'm just going to type my word lady. Now that's the font that it's defaulted to. To change that, I need to go over here to text and font. If it's not showing up here, go right up here to text, text and font. Okay, I have a couple of fonts in mind. One is this Bastion. I like that. The other one I was thinking of was this Besira script. They're both cute. They're both very similar, but I think I'll go with Bastion. So once I've selected it and I'm happy with it, you can see what it'll look like here. I go ahead and click apply. And you see now it's changed it over here. Now to do anything with this, to change the size, things like that, I need to select it. So I'm back up to the select tool. I'll move this over some and it's way too big. Now right now I have the dimensions locked so I can just slide it in from the corner and get it to a size I like. Maybe just a little bit smaller. Okay, so right now I feel like that's leaning a little bit too much. So if I click it again, it changes it where I can grab these rounded corners and I can kind of turn it. I think that looks a little bit better. Then I want to make my A a little bigger and my Y a little narrower. To do that, I go up here with it selected to path, object to path, object, ungroup. So now you see these can be worked with individually. So let's select just the A, make it a little wider, and then I think I want it just a little bit taller. Then I'm going to have to move it over where I want it. Now I'm going to select the Y, and I really think I just want that a little narrower. Actually, as I look at it, I feel like it needs to move down a little bit as well. So you're going to play with the letters till you're happy with them. Now I'm going to go ahead and group all that back together. So I'll select the L, hold the shift down, add each letter to it. Then I can go up here to Object and group. That way I can move it all as one unit. Okay, so I think I want it a little shorter and then just a little bit wider. Let's see what that looks like. Move it over a little bit to the left and then I think I'm done. Okay, so that's how I've personalized the first image. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. I think I'll just name this Tumblr 1, and I'm going to change it to a plain SVG. I've heard people say the Inkscape SVGs work well, but I'm going to go ahead and change it to a plain SVG. 
then I'll save that to my desktop. Now when I'm ready to print it, I can just open it back up in Inkscape and print it. Now because I'm doing sublimation when I do, I'm going to mirror the image, but actually making the tumbler is going to be a separate video. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up a new project. So I'll say new. Once again, I need to change my size. I don't want 12 by 12. I'm going to be printing on standard size paper. So I go to document properties, pick the standard size paper again, then I can just hit the X. Now for this one, we're doing that football mom image. So I'm going to import and it is right here, football mom straight tumbler. So I'll open that. Once again, I leave my import defaults alone. I click OK. I'll change the dimensions again to 8.1 by 9.4. And again, I'll zoom in. Now, one thing I love about this image, let me zoom back out. The seam is going to be where these two sides are, and I don't think you're really going to notice the seam. There's no dark colors there. There's a lot of white and sparkly going on, so I'm hoping this seam will be perfect. All right, we'll zoom back in. All I want to do is add number two here. So I'm going to go to the text tool again. I'll click basically where I want it, and I'm going to type the number sign and the number two. Now I want this to be white, so I'll go ahead and change that to white right down here. I'm still in my fonts tool. If I wasn't, again, you could click here or you could click up here. For this one, I'm going to use a font called Varsity. This was a free font that I got off of defonts.com. So I've selected it. Now notice here, this looks pretty plain, but let me show you what it looks like. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Let me go ahead and select the number two. You select it by going right here. Now I can change the size. I want to go ahead and lock the proportions. Then I'll just drag this to where I think it needs to be. I want it to be big enough to stand out but not so big that it's overbearing. I think that looks pretty good. I think I'd like it just a little taller, maybe a little narrower. And then what would it look like if I kind of tuck it up? Let's see, maybe tuck it over here. I think I like it a little off-centered like that. Hmm. Okay, so you're just going to play with this until you're happy with it. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'll go File, Save As, and then I'm going to name this Tumblr 2. It's still on plain SVG, so I'll just click Save, and then when I'm ready to make these tumblers, they'll be right on my desktop. I'll pull them in, I'll flip them horizontally, and I'll print them out on my sublimation printer. Now that's it for this video. I really just wanted to show you how you can take a generic image, add your own thing, and really personalize it or customize it. If you want to make sure and see the videos where I actually sublimate the tumblers, be sure you subscribe and then tap the bell and let YouTube know you want to be notified for all new videos I upload. Thanks so much for watching and sticking it out to the end. Until my next video, bye bye.